concludes the questions to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. We now move to question the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. And again, we start with topical questions. And I call Patsy McLoan. Mr. McLoan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Could I ask the Minister, and of course, allowing sensitively for a respectful period of bereavement, uh, that she advise, will her department honour, promote, in conjunction with other stakeholders, of course, and, rec and recognise uh, the great work of our Nobel laureate, the late Seamus Heaney? Uh, I thank the member for his question, and I think he put it in the proper context in terms of time around what's appropriate in terms of bringing anything forward. I am really, really keen to make sure that Seamus Heaney is marked, not just through DECA, but on behalf of this executive, indeed, of this entire assembly. His legacy is marked. He has left us a wonderful gift of literature that will pass and endure from one generation to another. And I think it's appropriate that we do something or some things that reflect you know, the esteem that he's been held. Um, so I am keen to do something. If the member has any suggestions on what that would look like, particularly given that he's from the parish and he knew Seamus personally, I'd be really keen to hear what they are. It will come as no surprise, I've heard of lots of things out there, but I'm really, I want to do something that each member of this assembly would be proud to be associated with, and the life uh, of Seamus Heaney needs to be marked. It would be a sin for that not to happen. Mr McLuhan. Um, I, I do appreciate what the Minister has said, and I would say I'd be more than happy to work with her as time moves on uh, to achieve that aim. Story. Mr. Story. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, in the light of the success over the summer when this House was in recess of the Field Marshal Montgomery Pipe Band, uh, coming uh, again ninth in terms of, in a row, the world champions, and also for the first time over 60 years? securing the drum corps, of which a member of my constituency, Mr Aaron McLean, was a very proud member. And will the Minister confirm to the House what arrangements she has put in place to give a public uh, reception and acknowledgement to what is an outstanding success for this band and our marching bands in Northern Ireland? Um, I thank the member for his question. I have a list of achievements over the summer. The member is right to say that there have been many. Um, and I think it's totally appropriate that we have some public reception here as an expression of our gratitude and indeed um, to congratulate the marvellous achievements um, that have been made so far. And not just with the, the achievements that they've made, but in terms of the skills and expertise and indeed the role models that they're passing on to up and coming musicians, I'm more than happy to support the, 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 the pipe band. I'm more than happy to do a public uh, reception up here. The member has attended receptions that I've hosted before, and I think every member of this house would be more than happy to attend that to show their appreciation and to, and to give congratulations. Story. Thank you, and I thank the Minister for uh, her reply, and we look forward to, to that event taking place. In the light of that recognition, could the Minister then uh, give an assurance to this House that she, her and her department will continue to support marching bands uh, as they play an integral part in the culture and in the provision of a uh, tapestry in Northern Ireland, which is very rich, and that her department will do everything that she can uh, to make sure that the appropriate finances are made available to bands such as Field Marshall and others, who at their own expense are put to a huge amount of money to actually keep those bands on the road and going to competitions such as the world's. You know, and I know topical questions, but I've only started topical questions, but it really needs to be a question. I don't mind members if they want to uh, very much develop uh, their question. But certainly not to a point where it's almost statements, Minister. I'd be briefer than the member who questioned me. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> Paul Gerber. 
uh, I'd like to ask the Minister for maybe an update in relation to uh, the redevelopment of our national stadium at Windsor Park. Um, well, the member, I'm assuming it's around the latest row over governance and appointments, and the member will be aware, and I'm sure will appreciate, that neither DECAL, myself, or anybody else should be involved or in the middle of any democratic election process. So I'm sure you'll accept that. But however, and this is where the however comes, any organisation that's in receipt of funding from government, regardless which department that comes from, have an appropriate responsibility to ensure governance is upheld. DECAL are working with the IFA to review the implications of the recent changes to their articles and associations. And I need to be assured that the appropriate uh, governance and accountability structures have been maintained to fully meet the needs of DECAL. Until that happens, I won't be signing off on any agreement uh, regarding the redevelopment of Windsor Park until I receive that assurance. In light of the answer I've received, is it possible for an update in relation to the state aid issue about the EU funding associated with this project? Okay. Um, the state aid issue is still not resolved. Uh, I mean, as a member, I'm sure is aware that I, I'm, I'm taking this uh, issue to Europe. Um, so there really is no update except it is business as usual. I'm working away. Uh, on the basis that Windsor Park needs to be redeveloped and redeveloped to a standard that's fit and we're all proud to have. But until certain issues, particularly around governance, are satisfied, uh, then that's one aspect. But I'm still working away on the stated issue in the confidence that they will be resolved and we'll move on. Brenda Hale. Mrs Hale. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can the Minister um, tell the Chamber what specific progress she is making to build on the work of her Cal predecessors and ensuring that the Ulster Scots culture tradition is funded on the same basis as the Irish language? Um, well, to be totally frank about it, there wasn't. Um, in terms of Cal, uh, my, my predecessor, there, there's a, a cigarette paper between what he is doing and what I am doing. Both the Ulster Scots Agency, both the Academy, and indeed the network, and the MAG, you know, uh, uh, through the Academy, have continued to bring forward programmes and funding opportunities for groups on the ground, and I continue to do that. Um, so I believe good progress has been made, particularly within the last year. I had a meeting recently with the Ulster Scots Agency. I'm quite happy. In fact, I'm more than happy with the progress to date, and I think there are some very exciting plans to be unve unveiled by the Ulster Scots community in the forthcoming months ahead. Mrs. Hale. I thank the Minister for her answer, and she will be aware that there is a view that has been held within the Ulster Scots community that they have been disadvantaged over the years by direct rule. And can the Minister just confirm to the House what she is doing to ensure that those years are consigned to history? Well, I think we all could make that claim in fairness. I think we have all been fairly disadvantaged as a result of direct rule, and from 2007 particularly, local ministers, particularly around the Ulster Scots and Irish language, have made sure that any gaps in terms of provision that, in my view, were deliberate, not only have been you know, filled, but indeed that we, in terms of fulfilling our statutory obligation to languages, not just do what we'll have to do, but do better than that. And I think we're certainly in the right direction. Raymond McCartney. Mr McCartney. Uh, McCartney. Uh, and can I ask the Minister, uh, she will be aware of the sort of the ongoing success of, of Derry City of Culture, but could she perhaps outline who is responsible for the legacy plan for the future? Um, the legacy plan, DECAL uh, committed £12.6 million to Derry City for the City of Culture, quite happy to do so. Uh, the basis of that uh, funding investment came with conditions, and the conditions to the Derry City Council was that they had to produce a legacy plan, because I've said it consistently in this House, and I'll say it again. I don't want people waking up in that city on the 1st of January 2014 with nothing. I think we all owe the people in that city uh, much more than that. And I'm working with Derry City Council and others to produce a legacy plan that we can all, that we're all happy to sign off yet on. Raymond McCartney. Uh, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt that the, the money that has come from the, the department and from, indeed, from across the executive has made a qualitative difference in the the outcomes for the city of culture, but it is 
uh, very, very important that we have a legacy plan. Can she give you any detail how she thinks that should unfold and, 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 uh, and outline that, please? Well, I'm sure the member can appreciate there are certain things that haven't even been signed off in a legacy plan, but certainly we're looking at things that target poverty. We're looking at things that provide better opportunities for social inclusion across the city. One of the things that struck me, particularly in terms of older people, and some of the work that went on, for example, in the gas yard and Nelson Drive and others, was that, that, that people who'd worked together for years, because of geography and because of how moving and that, hadn't seen each other in years. And I think it would be a real shame if you look at an example like that, that we can't fund. But we also need to look at infrastructure. We need to look at infrastructure around sport. We need to look at infrastructure around creative industries. We need to look at infrastructure around arts. I can't guarantee that on the 1st of January, I'm going to provide another 12.6 million, or indeed the overall package in the executive, which comes over 30 million, is going to be there. But we certainly need to step up to the plate in terms of where we go in terms of our investment for future years ahead. Adrian McQuillan. Mr McQuillan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I ask the Minister what help will her department give to support new regional sports grounds like the one planned by Korean Borough Council at Rugby Avenue? Well, I'm sure the member can appreciate. I haven't seen the Korean plan yet, but I've actually met some of the borough councils who at times forget that they have a statutory responsibility for leisure provision, but we'll put that aside. Um, I'm happy to look where we can bring provision together in terms of better investment. If you look at better investment in terms of local councils and government investment, you get a better product and indeed the citizens get a better service. I'm keen to look at it and if the member wishes to bring a delegation around that particular plan, I'm happy to meet him and to, to, to see what I can do, if anything, but I'm not aware of it. Ben McQuillan. Thank you, the Minister, for your answer. I understand you're due a visit very shortly to Corian to see the plan. I think it's next week, actually. So, you know, if you want to put an investment in a cash investment, it would always be welcome, but support in any shape, form or fashion would always be welcome as well. Well, I'm, I'm due to see Ban, and if, um, there's a couple at Ban Rowan Club which I have invested in, and I'm due to see some others. But I'm aware of, I hear a list of initiatives that are being developed in the pipeline, certainly in terms of geographical areas. So I'm um, sure the member has been approached by his constituents and even by councils and other groups about bringing those proposals forward. Happy to go to Coleraine, happy for Coleraine to come here, and I'm happy to talk to everybody. John Dallet, Mr. Dallet. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the, the Minister will be aware that for the first time in history there's an under-21 hurling team in an All-Ireland final from Antrim to play Clare. What representation has the Minister made to the BBC to reverse their decision not to televise that game? Well, in short, I haven't made any representation to the BBC. This has been an ongoing discussion and a conversation that I've had with broadcasters, particularly around all Ireland sports bodies and sports that you know, basically are acting in a partitionist way, in my view. Um, I'm delighted that it's my county, but I understand, as a dairyman, you're happy to enjoy the success of Antrim, and I do feel that we are being denied an opportunity to see wonderful skill and wonderful you know, sportsmanship because of the, the, the fact that there's no broadcasting. No. I was born in County Antrim. Uh, when the Minister is making a representation to the BBC over the next day or two, will she remind them that they give a lot of coverage to uh, schools rugby and to the Milk Cup, of which I am also an enthusiastic supporter? And on that basis, I hope she is successful in persuading the BBC to reverse that decision, which I feel was unfair. I am happy to do that, and I am sure the member will agree with me. I am also having ongoing discussions, particularly with women in sport, who don't get covered, in not only just by BBC, but by other networks and broadcasters. There is a disparity. There's the three big sports that I, and it's good that the sports is covered. I'm happy that they're covered, but it's disproportionate to other sports and other codes within sports. Mr. Maskey. Uh, Maggot, uh, can, Kora, can I ask the Minister could she outline the, uh, how the funding for the sport of boxing will be brought forward and what the plans are for clubs which need to be either refurbished or indeed rebuilt? Um, uh, I'm happy to say that um, the, the Irish Amateur Boxing Association have signed off on a letter uh, for this for August, uh, which meant that the equipment was started to go into clubs, um, which much needed equipment. Uh, certainly, I mean, I think it's fair to say I've said this to the IABA, I've said this to Sport NI, and indeed to others. I'm unhappy at the, the, the speed in which 
This initiative that was launched last year is actually only starting to get a new ground from last month. So that's the equipment end, which is a small grant, as I'm sure as a member will appreciate. The capital needs, and most of these boxing clubs are in a poor state, despite the excellence that they produce. There are technical consultants that are going out to do assessments. I believe that 66 clubs so far have expressed an interest in having either a new club or a club that needs refurbished. That process should start early to the middle of October, as far as I'm aware. Order members, that ends the period for topical questions. We now move to oral questions.